we're here at the Singer um, Museum today, and we're among some incredible furniture, all put in a, a manner of that you might see it in a house. Who collected all these things, and could you tell us about him? Yeah, well, it's a couple uh, in a way, and uh, his name is Dirk Nienhuis, and he and his wife uh, Lisbeth are collecting all these kind of things uh, from the period uh, 1895 till 1930, 1940, and all are Dutch items uh, designed by Dutch architects and uh, designers. At the turn of the century, there was a lot of influence that came from what we would say England, the arts and crafts movement yeah. in a little America. Uh, who were some of the uh, designers and people that were famous in Holland? In Holland, well, H.P. Berlaag, of course, who uh, designed the Stock Exchange Building. That was the first uh, modern uh, building of the new architecture. And K.P.C. de Basel, and also Jacques van der Bos and Theo Nieuwenhuis. We are standing now in front of a uh, bookcase of Theo Nieuwenhuis and Dijsselhof, Leon Cachet, and a lot of other people. Now, how did the Dutch style, I mean, it, it, each country adopts something from another yeah. maybe, but it, they make it their own. How did the Dutch style differ, say, than the style of Morris in England? Or well, it was very much influenced by uh, the British arts and crafts, which you can see uh, the use of oak and also the construction. And um, uh, maybe it's uh, the Dutch style is very uh, severe, very strong, and very constructive. Also influenced by H.P. Berlage, and uh, also a little bit of uh, the uh, Dutch colonies, the, the, the Dutch East Indies, and uh, also influenced by uh, Theosophy, the Theosophy of Helen Blavatsky. And so some of the, uh, there was a, a kind of religious undertone. Yeah. What were, were some of the philosophies behind the, uh, the forms that were used in this? What do you mean? Well, the f uh, much of it seems to be a, a kind of organic form or uh, yeah. Maybe it would be described as Art Nouveau or something. Yeah, uh, but that Art Nouveau in general is very much influenced by nature. This is one of the main sources. Now, within this collection, yeah. what has he uh, collected? And, and could you describe some of the types of objects and some of the motifs that they used? Well, uh, there are a lot of uh, animal uh, motifs in, in furniture, in ceramics, in, in, in almost every object. And also in the book that uh, also came out with this exhibition, there's an essay uh, written uh, on this uh, subject. This is one of the main, uh, main, main uh, influences and motifs. Now, when we look at the objects themselves, there's a, a kind of coherence in style. Were there painters that also went along with this period? I notice there's a lot of paintings in this exhibition. Mm -hmm. Who were some of the painters? Dijsselhoff, G.W. Dijsselhoff was a, a painter and uh, he also began uh, starting uh, designing furniture, but he wasn't very successful uh, in that time and uh, he stopped that. And also uh, Jan Torop did some, not furniture, but some decorative art. He designed, uh, for instance, uh, um, mirrors and uh, Johan Thorn Pricker, who did also uh, furniture. That was a period of time when oftentimes an architect would design everything in a home. I mean, from the, the home right. itself to the The doorknob to, door to a, a teaspoon, yeah. It's the Gesamtkunstwerk. And everything was uh, designed by one person or uh, designed by uh, the same persons who have the same philosophy uh, about designing or, or, or their uh, uh, thinking of art. Now this is an exhibition of, as you say, a couple. Is the whole um, collection itself perhaps unique in Holland? And, and what does it entail? How much and, and what, what do we see here in the Singer? 
It's very unique. They have a very large collection. We don't see everything, but most of the things are always displayed here, but still they have uh, things uh, at their home, at uh, their office, and also in their depot. So it's a huge collection. It's a very uh, one of the most important collections uh, in the Netherlands uh, uh, of uh, things around 1900. He has even things that uh, a museum doesn't have. Now you've m more or less designed this exhibition. Did you have a, a guiding idea? It's wonderful the way it, it, it works as a thing. Could you tell us a little about the design element of designing this exhibition? Well, Marijke van der Weijst uh, designed uh, the, the red uh, backgrounds and uh, there are six rooms and the first room is uh, with furniture that are very uh, geometric of form. The second room where we're now standing in are uh, more elaborate, more uh, luxurious. And then we have uh, the third room where the uh, dining room is with with the uh, with all the other things and then we have uh, uh, a <laughs> a bedroom <laughs> also by the same uh, the same uh, designer Jacques van der Bos and then we have a children's room and then we have a room with Amsterdam school furniture now, how did the Amsterdam School, which is very familiar to uh, people around Amsterdam because you see it every day and live in it, how did that differ from what we're seeing in this room? Well, the the forms are more uh, expressionistic uh, if you compare it with uh, Nieuwe Kunst, the style from 1900. It's more uh, uh, s uh, straighter from line. That's the main difference. Now they were still influenced by Berlacher. Yeah? Mm, not really. No, no, no. It was uh, uh, a reaction on on the uh, rationalistic style of Berlacher. They wanted more uh, emotion in their style, and uh, Berlacher didn't have so much emotion in in his designs. I think. No, it's uh, in fact it's a reaction on Berlacher's mm. style. Now, we were talking earlier, and I I, I noticed that. Even the poster for this exhibition has an animal on it. Why do you think animals were such an important motif in, in this period of time? Well, it has uh, everything to do with the, the zoos that were established in the 19th century all over the Western world. And artists uh, went to the zoos and were inspired by all these animals. And uh, you see a lot of monkeys, and maybe they are attracted to the monkeys because they're so uh, like human beings. I think that's the main, uh, the main reason. Now, I noticed that you've designed this uh, exhibition in a manner that uh, often the paintings coincide with the objects that uh, that they're set at, set next to, the, for example, the children's uh, area. Were, are these collectors, the husband and wife, uh, also collectors of paintings of each period? And uh, how did how did the juxtaposition of the objects and the paintings work out here in this exhibition? Well, the paintings have images of uh, the city of Amsterdam and uh, Mr. Nienhuis is front of the city of Amsterdam, so uh, he thought that as a, as a motive to, uh, to uh, do the collection. That's the main reason. We see a whole collection of uh, uh, toys, uh, children's toys for, for boys and girls, and it was designed by Kofersu, and Kofersu was as you can see, very much influenced by the style of Rietveld and also of the Hague School. All these uh, colors are uh, uh, bold and, and lively and uh, um, I presume uh, children uh, like these colors. And uh, it's made by uh, the firm of ADO, which means Arbeid door Onvolwaardigen, that will say uh, uh, labor by disabled people and that sounds very political incorrect 
in this time, but not in that time, because uh, that means that people were not able to participate to, uh, to labor. And uh, Mr. Nienhuis uh, is fond of uh, this kind of furniture, and I have combined it with uh, uh, Negro dolls that uh, comes from the collection of Dispet, his wife, and I also combined it with uh, paintings, with images of, uh, of cars and transport uh, uh, f firms and also by uh, trains that has the same, uh, the same uh, form. Well, thank you very much. Could you tell us how long this exhibition, this beautiful exhibition here at the Singer Museum will be here? It will be here till the 12th of June. So I will say, come everybody to have a look at this beautiful exhibition. Ron, thank you very much for being with us today. Welcome.